Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. We face as a society, as a country, as a state, as a city, questions about how we're going to find the energy, process the energy to power our civilization. This is one of those talks that sometimes evolved in ways that I was not anticipating. I decided to start with some pictures from Kenya because not all parts of the world use energy as much as we do. So this is a Maasai village in Southern Kenya. And I just wanted to show this picture as well as one coming up as an alternative to how we live in our modern 21st century society. But then I realized things were not always what they seemed because take a look, in fact, all the way through the talk because I can't use a laser pointer in this format. You can see what I'm trying to point you to with red circles or arrows or so forth. Well, you see a tire. And you can zoom in and there's a discarded cell phone on top of the mud hut. And indeed I saw on top of another one, an operational solar powered lantern. So they do use energy. This is a kitchen with wood burning heat. But again, you look, you look at all the metal that's on their, uh, their uh, site there and a whole bunch of plastic. All these things take energy and in modern industry to make. So the rest of the talk stems from a single diagram at this website. And when I get home later today, I'll send you that in information as well as some other stuff. Now this is a complex diagram and I'm gonna walk through different parts of it because this diagram in one place shows all the energy in the United States, where it comes from, the sources, making electricity and how it's used, residential industry, transportation and so forth. So let's start back on the left side of the diagram with energy sources. So on the left side, there are all the different places we get energy from. Everything from biomass to geothermal, to petroleum, solar, they're all there. But if you add it all up, 85%, six out of seven units of energy depend on burning carbon. So if we want to reduce the carbon emissions, six out of seven of all the energy we use in the country has to change. That's the magnitude of the challenge. So we've got the carbon, the non-carbon resources, and among the non-carbon sources, nuclear energy is more than half. So if you ask what what provides energy in our society that's not produced, producing carbon, the main answer is nuclear energy. I'll add it here, as well as a couple other places, an Idaho specific pointer. And with regard to all the energy sources, the key thing with Idaho is we have zero fossil fuels. You name it, oil, gas, coal, we don't have it. We import it from other places, Wyoming, Montana, but we don't have any ourselves. So part of the story is electricity. And you work through the numbers and 37% or a bit more than a third of all the energy used in the United States is used to produce electricity. That conversion You'll see as I go further through the talk, electrification is critical to our future. 
So one third of our energy goes into making electricity. Of that energy, of what is used to make electricity, three fifths, 61%, comes from burning carbon. The other two fifths is not producing carbon. And again, among the non-carbon sources, nuclear power is the dominant one. Idaho. Idaho imports about one third of our electricity from other states, from Utah, Wyoming, Washington State. Uh, hydropower from Washington State, coal from the other ones, which means we're at the mercy of other states. Let's talk residential and commercial. So back to the full diagram and here I've removed things that are not relevant to residential and commercial. We find that 80%, four out of five, of the energy used to power our residences, our towns, is coming from carbon sources. You look through all the numbers, you can see carbon, non-carbon, electricity, non-electricity, there's the 81%. If we wanna do something about it, the start with taking electricity and shifting the electricity sources from natural gas and coal to other things such as nuclear and wind. That would get rid of this 27%. But then you left with still half of the problem. Non-electricity carbon, that's heat, uh, for example. You're going to have to use more solar heat and geothermal and electrification. So industry, same sort of diagram. I'll simplify things. 95% of, of the power necessary to make industry work comes from carbon emitting sources. If we wanna do something about it, again, we can electri uh, take electricity, shift it to non-carbon sources, but that leaves us 88% is still coming from carbon-based sources. And they're not really good options about doing anything about it. Transportation. You see by the thickness of the line at the bottom that the dominant form of transportation energy is petroleum. And probably everyone today that's been out in the car is a gasoline powered car. And that's what's showing on this diagram. If you add up natural gas, biomass, Petroleum, that's 99.9% .9 of transportation. And then a little bit of electricity comes into the picture. The bottom line is of all the energy used to make transportation happen in the United States, 99.96% is from carbon emitting sources. Yeah, we can electrify it, but it's not gonna be easy. So in summary, six out of seven units of energy in the United States comes from carbon emitting sources. And one third of the energy goes into making electricity. And Idaho is an energy pauper. We import all of our carbon, oil, natural gas, and coal. If we want to do something about carbon, we have to decarbonize electricity using all the non-carbon options. Electrify where we can. It's not always going to be easy. And for those people who think we can rapidly somehow get off the carbon trick, I hope I've convinced you that it's not going to be easy. We better be realistic in how much and how fast we can change the picture that I've shared with you today. DJ, the floor is yours. <laughs>